Welcome to the NICU Nutrition Basics module. Neonates can be classified based on their birth weight. Extremely low birth weight infants, or ELBW infants, weigh less than 1,000 grams. Very low birth weight infants, or VLBW, weigh less than 1,500 grams. While low birth weight infants, or LBW, weigh less than 2,500 grams. Neonates can also be classified based on their gestational age. The small for gestational age infant, or SGA infant, has a birth weight less than the 10th percentile. This can be further subdivided into symmetrical SGA, where the birth length and head circumference are both less than the 10th percentile, or asymmetrical SGA, where the birth length and head circumference are preserved above the 10th percentile. The appropriate for gestational age infant, or AGA infant, has a birth weight between the 10th and 90th percentile. The large for gestational age infant, or LGA infant, has a birth weight above the 90th percentile. The expected growth for a preterm infant weighing less than 1.8 kilos is 15 to 20 grams per kilo per day. Whereas the expected growth for a preterm infant weighing more than 1.8 kilograms is 25 to 35 grams per day. A preterm infant's length increases by 0.8 to 1.1 centimeters per week, and the head circumference increases by 0.5 to 0.8 centimeters per week. Common causes of poor growth include protein insufficiency, steroid use, malabsorption, increased theophylline levels, thyroid issues, low bicarbonate levels, anemia, low chloride levels, hyponatremia, and micronutrient deficiencies. This chart shows the calorie and protein recommendations for the preterm infant. Please review it at your leisure. For enteral feeding, breast milk is the best choice. If the infant is less than 35 weeks gestation, use breast milk or preterm formula. Donor human milk may be used if your infant qualifies for use in your institution if mother's milk is not available. Fortify breast milk with human milk fortifier or HMF. Infants should not be discharged home on HMF or preterm formula. Remember to change to a preterm transitional formula prior to discharge home. Infants should be greater than 35 weeks and greater than 2 kilograms before changing to a transitional formula. Enteral supplements that can be used include human milk fortifier. This increases calories and protein. Beneprotein, which helps meet protein goals. MCT oil, which increases calories. Polycos powder, which increases calories or rice cereal, which is used to thicken formula feeds. Infants who cannot be fed enterally may need parenteral nutrition. Starter PN is a pre-made solution containing dextrose, amino acids, calcium, and heparin, which can be used when a preterm infant is admitted overnight. It may be used for infants who are less than 32 weeks gestation and or less than 1,500 grams in birth weight. Administration of amino acids to ELBW and VLBW infants helps to minimize the loss of protein stores and improves protein balance. Central or peripheral parental nutrition can begin on the first day of life. You should increase macronutrients daily as able to goal values. Adjust electrolyte composition daily based on labs, urine output, etc and try to maximize the calcium to phosphorus ratio as soon as possible. PN also includes multivitamins with iron, zinc, which is the only trace element required on the first day of life, other trace elements such as manganese, copper, chromium, and selenium, and cysteine, which helps increase the solubility of calcium and phosphorus. This concludes this lesson. Thank you for watching the NICU Nutrition Basics module.